Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Chad with WealthX Movement Philippines. And today we are graced and humbled by uh, the presence of one of the most amazing and very interesting person that I've met in my entire life in this planet. This guy, initially, I mean, the genesis of our relationship, we, we started as a mentor-mentee. He was the mentor. And quite frankly, he's, I think, uh, one year, a couple of years younger than me, which makes it even more amazing. And then eventually developed the relationship to, you know, being really good friends. We go way back nine years ago. And, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why I, I'm saying that this guy is amazing. But first of all, again, welcome to the premiere episode of WealthX Movement Philippines short for, for wealth exploration. <clears throat> Let's just make uh, call it wealth X movement because it sounds cooler. And the mission objective of this, uh, this initiative is to bring in really successful people, all right, top performers, top producers who are passionate, enthusiastic, energetic, and wouldn't take second best in their own respective careers and industries. So we'll be bringing in entrepreneurs, business owners, you know, career people like doctors, uh, people from the BPO industry, all sorts of, of really top producers. Sit down with them, whether it's in person or, you know, virtual, like, like in this Zoom setting. Interview them, learn from their mistakes and failures and how they overcame their adversities, challenges, and you know, pick their brain a bit. And, and again, hopefully by doing this, we add value to, to you guys, our beloved audience. Uh, and you know, we'll try to grow it from there. So guys, uh, Brian Murphy, welcome, Brian. How are you doing, man, man? Hey, man, doing great. Great to be here, man. What an, what an honor. What an honor to just be here with you today and witness the the growth of Chad, you know, <laughs> man, you've really come along. Really. Oh, dude. Uh, I, I would say that I have, uh, first of all, thank you. And I have good, uh, not good, but great mentors. Uh, you're one of them, obviously. So let me just tell you a little bit about Brian Murphy. He's a co-founder of uh, what was then uh, custom aid development. Um, that's, that's the predecessor, but I'm, I'm going to talk about a couple of companies because they have a couple of companies, co-founder of Murphy Consulting um, and Linkage Web Development, or is it just Linkage or web, Linkage Web Development? You know, the, we go by Linkage, you know, linkage. the company is Linkage mm -hmm. Web Development Solutions Incorporates, a long company, right? And then uh, my main brand, which is Murphy Consulting. And then before that, it was custom mid design when we first got started. Yeah. So there's been, there's been, man, we got like six or seven brands <laughs> online that we've launched and that have had some level of success pretty much. Yeah. That's how yeah. it goes. Absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> so dude, like, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in finer details because a lot of crazy stories and experiences. Uh, and I've been honored yeah. to be, be uh, been one of the, the pioneering uh, like salespeople of, of yes. this huge empire that you built, man. I, you know, two companies. I, you got a couple of offices here in the Philippines, I think. Uh, yeah. Is that still accurate? Okay, cool. Milf, uh, Murphy Consulting is the international company and, and Linkage is um, the, the, the one that is nationwide. The Philippine so, company, yeah. Philippine company. Yeah, exactly. So two companies. You got about 50 full-time staff. Uh, yeah. One of your biggest uh, clients here in the Philippines is new Clark city or new uh, uh, Clark global city, which is amazing. And I know yeah. you've been like helping out and servicing a lot of huge hotels as well. Uh, so it's, it's really such an amazing feat. And um, another thing that I want to point out is these guys along with his brother, and by the way, this is going to be a two part series uh, started the, the company at the age of uh, I think, you mentioned, Brian, you were 20 back then, right? 20, 21, yeah, something like that. And Pat's two years older than me, so oh, yeah. very, very young, yeah. Dude, so yeah, so you were really a couple of years younger than me because I'm 30, so you're 30 years old now, right? I'm 30, man. I'm getting old, man, getting old. Dude, you're, yeah. you're, you're freaking young. I'm 32 years so old. Been, 30, 32, you don't look it, man. You don't look it. You're staying young. Dude, you're too kind, must, man. 
<laughs> <laughs> so okay first question my man like so if we we hang out back in you know your elementary days or say high school days and we were really good friends who was who was brian murphy what was your personality like what are your interests during that time Oh man, who was Brian Murphy during during that time, like elementary? Yeah, when you were young. Oh man, I was confused. I, you know, see, when I was younger, you know, we we grew up in. I was born here in the Philippines, grew up in the States, and by the time I was in third grade, we we were already living in Costa Rica. You know, me and my family. You know, and um, so that was. You would have met me. I would have been this kid who couldn't speak your language. I would have been a foreigner to you. You know, they used they called me a chino in Costa Rica, and okay. so I would have been learning a, a new language. But I was always very introverted. I was always very observant of the environment around me, and I could see like you know patterns and and things patterns and you know, different countries, different societies, things like that. Um, but yeah, man, you would have met me. We would probably played some Pokemon together, okay. maybe. So introverted, yeah. like I was a nerd, man. I was nerd, a nerd. Yeah, I was okay. Introverted nerd. Yeah. So, so that's very interesting because, and that probably uh, defies my my conventional understanding as far as what an ideal salesperson is, because. I, I would think like a, a typical salesperson would be extroverted, you know, like a social animal. And, and that's my type of personality. But you, you're saying being my mentor, uh, you, you're so, so that basically defies limiting beliefs about what a salesperson is, whether you're, you're an introvert or an extrovert, you can be an amazing salesperson is what I'm getting here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see the thing about me is I was, was always very reserved. I keep a very, you know, close group of friends. I don't really go out and make friends. I'm sort of stuck in my own world, in my own, you know, create creativity. So I don't know, man. I'm I've been told I'm a contradiction of many things. You know, <laughs> but but so so that's been the stereotype, huh? Introverted people are not good sales salesmen. Well, not um, necessarily good salesmen, but uh, they most of them aren't salesmen, basically. More of like engineers you know mm -hmm. like like elon musk type of person and but but then again he he like for the past several years he started being out there and being the face of the three companies oh but that guy is an introvert man elon musk that yeah. guy is you know yeah <laughs> completely so, introverted yeah well, that's awesome man that's that's i guess that's that's something that I always picked up on, but never really talked about until now. Uh, so, so dude, like who are your, in so let's talk about like your influences in not, not, well, not sales, but like who are your main influences in, in life? My main influences in life? The people you look Girls. up to, your, your heroes. You know, whether it's a family member or someone outside of the family. Okay. I mean, my main influences in life, these, <coughs> these two books here, man. <clears throat> Art of War, Sun Tzu, <laughs> and uh, The Prince, Niccolo Machiavelli. I didn't go to high school. I mean, I didn't go to college. When I got out of high school, that was it. You know? That was it? <laughs> that was it. That, these amazing. books became my, my life. I studied these books, you know. I, I said to myself, shit, man, um, sick of going to school for all these years. And, and, you know, and why I could is that? See, because, because I could see that it was a, you know, kind of like a bullshit system. You know, when, you, when you're out of the box so much, you can see, okay, well, what's everybody's plan in life? I'm going to go to school, and then I'm going to go to college, and then I'm going to go get a job, and then I'm going to go get married, and then I'm going to, you know, it's all very sequential and i just said to myself man okay you know it's going to be a little bit different for me but like main influences would be these books if you talk about like people i look mm. up to man there's there's so many people i look up to Top steve three. irwin steve irwin man amazing guy michael steve. jordan yeah you know 
there's so many so many different influences in the wolf of wall street what about that guy huh what about what about jordan belfort yeah of course dude that guy's wild you know <clears throat> more influences than that but you know so that's awesome those books great books by the way i've consumed both of them uh well i, I think i went halfway with the prince uh but art of war by sun Tzu, like it's it's being in th- implemented you know, all across a lot of interest. I, I think Duterte actually implemented, you know, the art of war during his campaign, but that's my personal opinion and speculation. Mm. I digress. Um, what about, what about your, your relationship with, with your, your, your father? And the reason I ask this is because from, from what I know, which is obviously limited, uh, what I know of him is he's a seasoned real estate investor. I would think he's also an amazing salesperson. And the way he reared yeah, you he and, and Pat uh, would be yeah. like grounded, uh, from, uh, you know, on, on sales. And can you talk a little bit about that? Dude, you're, you're absolutely on point. You know, I wouldn't be the person I am <laughs> without, you know, my dad, um, my mom. But, you know, let's talk about my dad. So this guy, you know, master salesman, you know, he could, he could sell anything. He's done phone sales, he's done in-person sales, but his big thing is he's a real estate investor. He owns real estate, you know, doesn't run business on them, just acquires real estate, commercial real estate and, you know, rents them out. So it was his way of living, you know, I guess when you're a child and you're looking at your surroundings and you're looking at your mom and you're looking at your dad, those are the people that will influence you the most, actually. So I always saw my dad, and you know, there's a funny story here because as I was growing up, I remember I was going to school, right? Yeah. And I'd see my dad, my dad would get up, you know, he'd be out there in his, you know, in his t- uh, white t-shirt and his boxers, he'd do the same thing. He'd in front of the TV every morning, you know, eat his granola, whatever. I'd go to school, I'd come back, he'd still be there. You know, and I says, Dad, do you have a job? I go to all my I go to all my friends house, you know, and and I see, OK, they, their parents are working. Their dad's never is working. And my dad's over there, is, you know, in his underwear is like, what are we going to eat tonight? Honey is talking to my mom. And I'm like, does this guy even have a job? So I realized that about the, a very young age that, you know, it was just different, different situation. And he didn't have to work. He always lived semi-retired because he had the real estate, you know, he found a way to get out of the system. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he had yeah. real estate acquisitions. Actually, one of my long-term plans is to become an investor, if not a real estate developer, because absolutely. If, for me, what I think as far as real estate uh, is concerned is that it's it's timeless. I mean, we'll we'll will will have technology and it's it's going to evolve faster than how how we can cope with it but real estate is people are always going to need you know a, a shelter to live in and um so so that's well they that's, don't make any more land that's for sure they're not making it you absolutely know? yeah um mark twain mark twain there's a quote by mark twain saying if you are to invest not verbatim but if you are to invest in something buy land because they don't make it anymore so you're on point. So uh, let, let's talk about your teenage years in Costa Rica. Uh, Costa, Costa Rica. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, like, was it true? I'm not sure if it was you or was, who, who almost got shot or did you guys actually got shot at? What, what happened? Yeah. There? Okay, can yeah. we talk about that a little bit, bro? <clears throat> you, what do you want to talk about? Like third world, third world, uh, uh, homicide? <laughs> no, no, no. I was just, it, it was just, it, it was, I just sort so of here's kinda, the story. Here, here's okay. the story. So, so Patrick, um, so, <clears throat> well, I personally, I, I had an incident where I was going, you see, I was in high school and around this time, maybe like 17 years old, young kid. So, you know, every Friday after high school, you know, after class, I used to get together with my buddies and, you know, this is the age when you start drinking. You know, maybe sooner than that, I was a late bloomer, but, uh, you know, so we had, we went to the, I can't remember where we went, but we had a backpack and we had a bunch of cheap booze in it, man. And we were going to a friend's house. It was maybe seven, eight o'clock at night. You know, Costa Rica is a small, beautiful, friendly Latino 
yeah, town, yeah, yeah. man. They're all Catholics and they got churches and stuff. So it's, it's beautiful over there. But <clears throat> we're walking home and the sun's down. You know, it's already nighttime. I see a car speeding up. It's coming down the road. It's just speeding at us. And then he turns, man. He does those brake turns like in Fast and Furious. And then you got all of a sudden three guys coming out of the car with masks, with guns. And they're holding me up. <clears throat> I'm at, you know, shit. I have a guy come out of the car. He's pointing the gun at me. I got another one on my head. And they're just frisking me, taking my phone, taking my shit. They even took <laughs> the booze, you know. <laughs> and I remember them, I remember them, you know, fucking going to the car. And I said, you know, because I was a stupid kid. I, I said, shit, you forgot the watch, you know. And he comes over and he grabs <laughs> the watch. I'm like, oh, fuck. Should have kept my mouth shut. That's so, a fucking crazy experience, though, dude. Okay. Yeah, and then and then Patrick, um, I think he almost got stabbed. He did have a stabbing incident. And then my mom and my sister got carjacked. You know. Was it was it because you were in the wrong neighborhood, or I mean, from, from no, I, no, I was in a beautiful high end neighborhood. The the problem is it's it's different. See, uh, for those of you who aren't who aren't like world travelers, and I'm not saying I'm a world traveler, but you know, it's just a different thing over there. There's violent crime is a thing. Petty violent crime is a thing. And I hate saying that because I love Costa Rica, man. It's awesome place, beautiful beaches, beautiful culture, beautiful people, but there's just something that happens. It's really weird after dark where you could be walking in a in an area and you could get mugged, you know. So it's like I'm I'm pretty sure it, it you know the the area changed for the better because again uh just for the record there was like several several years ago uh, that's an amazing story man it got me cracked yeah. up uh, it's amazing because um i, I want to get into the mindset uh of of i mean your mindset during the time you had to make this shift when when you know this wonderful blessing and and like news that okay miko by the way amazing a uh, woman I've met her long-term uh, friend as well. Miko is is the girlfriend of of Brian. To to those who don't know, because um, some some people would have handled that differently. Like um, I'm I'm pretty sure that fear would be a, a similar emotion. But you made a shift in mindset and say okay, and and take note you were like 20 years old, which is not really like that's still 20 years super, old, dude. That's young. That's that's that that feels like you just shot yourself in the foot like big time when you're i'll be honest man it is a blessing but when you're a kid and you're just like yeah i'm out of school you know shit started to happen i'm gonna travel the world and all this and now you're in a situation where it's like your back is against the wall the opportunity is gone now it's not about me because you know now it's about this this kid and it's okay if i you know if I screw up my life, honestly, but it's not okay if I screw up, you know, this person's life who I, I'm in charge of. So I had an overwhelming feeling of responsibility now because, because life just got real, man. And that was the realization. It was like, it was all fun and games, you know, didn't last long and then life just got real. So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, Brian? Are you gonna continue to work for this guy, make eight hundred dollars a month, get treated like shit? And I'm not saying I'm not saying that because I love Bruce and I love uh, the the you know what they what happened, but that's kind of how I felt, man. I kind of felt like it's you it's know, a there system how 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 the company transformed over the course of time after they brought in the managers. I think is what you're saying. Yeah, and and you know what 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 mm -hmm. really got to me is um you know. I've always been very supportive of, 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 of Pat because it wasn't really so much for me that I deserved anything, but it was my brother, Pat, who I witnessed build this thing and, you know, in a position to where, okay, he's the vice president of the company, but he doesn't even have shares or a percentage mm. in, in the company. Yeah. Yet 80% <laughs> of the success, you know, 70% of the success at least from from a sales point of view, customer acquisition, you know. Mm. So so I felt like this is a bad deal. And I tell you what, Chad, the day that I went in with 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 my girlfriend, we you know went to the doctor, got the test, 
the thing said positive. I couldn't believe it. I said, what? Okay. It didn't register in my head. Yeah. You know, that, that, oh, okay, she's pregnant. What do I do now? And so it's a very scary time. But I tell you one thing I did do the very same day, I remember getting home and I remember making the decision that I'm going to start my own company. Because it was at that point where we had the skills, we had the knowledge, Mm -hmm. we had seen and built this business. The only question is, could we succeed on our own? Could we do it? And so I knew, you know, on the day of, you know, and I'm just talking about my life, my experiences, everybody's life is different. Everybody's yeah. you know, experience is different. But for me, um, that's the day I, I decided to start my own business. I remember drafting up my logo. Yeah, it yeah. was an A. I named the company Custom A Design. I didn't even know what the hell A stood for. It was just <laughs> a brand I was going to stick <clears throat> on. And I was going to go out there and just do what I did for the company, bring in thousands and thousands of dollars. But I, but I was going to do it for myself because, you know, now that you have a family and now you decide you got to be responsible, you know, you can't take care of your family on, you know, 800 bucks a month. You know, you have to, sure. you have to, you know, build something, right? Oh, well, I want to point out so uh, a, a couple of things and then we'll talk about, you know, the genesis, the start of custom made design. First of yeah. all, you know, you say this, you're an amazing father, amazing family man. Um, so I, I admire that about you. Uh, I, I think a lot of people know that and would definitely agree with me. Second of all, I, I think one of the great things that can happen to someone who wants to start a business is to do what exactly what you and Pat did to go into a, a business that, uh, you know, a startup and observe how things are done from, from a grassroots you know, standpoint and observe because that's where real learning, um, you know, comes, you, you become a full stack person. You learn sales, marketing, management, and, and all the different facets and aspects of really building a business as opposed to going into a huge corporation where you just really like, and and I know this because I, before I, I work with you guys in custom made design, I worked in the BPO industry for four years. Each year I got fired. One company, which is Cytel, hi- uh, fired me three times and then like hired me three times as well. It was a really funny like situation. And then I went to Convergees and then after a year, uh, you know, I get fired again. And then, you know, uh, and so that, w- that was it. Like the fourth time. I told him, this, this is not going to work for me. And I met Alvin, a mutual friend. He told me. Yeah, Alvin. Right? Like, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're still good friends. He's, he's here in Pangasinan as well. He said, dude, I don't know what to do. Because we were really, we got really close when I was working with Convert Cheese. And we we're like buddy yeah. buddies, like close friends. I said, dude, I'm going to help you out. I work with this two amazing, tenacious young men. Right? And they're about your age. They're just starting a company. Uh, and why don't you go ahead and reach out to them? And I reached out to Pat. And, and then, you know, that's the start of my career. My first sales career experience was really amazing. Again, I learned so much from you guys. So let's talk about that. Uh, custom A design, how you built it, what were you, what's, how, your struggles. I want to learn your struggles and how you started the company from just being you, uh, Pat, Rick. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and, and Dylan, Jason, and then, um, y- you know, Ryan, Ryan, and, and a couple of graphic artists. Talk, talk to us. Yeah, about yeah. That, bro. <clears throat> God, man, that was, that was a, a journey. That was my first journey into what I thought was going to be smooth sailing, man. I had, see, I'm the kind of guy that, that has everything planned out. You know, I remember being a young kid, you know, uh, before I even left to the Philippines, I I had this idea in my head, man, I'm going to go get my college degree. I'm going to have my master's degree by 20, whatever. So anyway, I had I had the whole thing planned. I said, this is going to be a smooth ride. I'm going to be successful within like a year. I'm going (laughs) to sell 300 clients. And uh, so that my that was that was a that was my first step. You know how they say uh, the journey to uh, 
journey of a there's thousand a saying miles out there. begins yeah, with a single the, step. With a single step. Yeah. Except my journey was was the journey of a thousand ass kickings begins with your first <laughs> ass kicking. And so <laughs> and so that's what it was. That's what, and frankly, that's what it still is. And so that's, that's what entrepreneurship is all about. It's about, you know, how much can you take, how many ass kickings can you take until you either give up or you succeed? So the start of custom made design, man, that was something. So uh, how did we do it? Well, we basically started the company with no money. We had no money. Zero? Um, like, like like zero we had like you know a couple months worth of savings maybe like a couple thousand dollars but no okay. investment in the company zero dollars mm -hmm. you know other than setting up the initial website so you know i drew up a logo i got a designer i contacted him uh what was his name joe cabs and he designed for me my initial logo my initial website and Man, it really sucked. I, I, I think that website sold, it's gone. The custom made design <laughs> one. And, uh, you know, Patrick had jumped on board. You know, we started it together. We decided, hey, we're gonna start this company, right? So it was mutual. And um, man, I remember just uh, cold calling and working in my little, you know, 10,000 peso a month, $200 a month, apartment in the Baguio, in the Baguio slums, basically, because that's where I lived at that point. Yeah, you know, and so all I had was a computer, all I had was a headset an internet connection. A, a fucked and up I had internet, my, internet connection back then. You're lucky I'm, to get I'm two Mbps. Up. Terrible, back absolutely day, yeah. terrible. Yeah, so I'm living in this, you know, and, and so it's it's a real humble experience, you know, this is this is when I when I quit you know, E Silver and I go to and and start my own company. So that's what I had, man. It was it was very sad. It was like you have a web page, you got an internet connection, you got a list, start your business, start your company. Right? Patrick's gonna he's gonna help me do some calls. He didn't do very, very many. He but he figured out how to produce the work, how to get the production done. But it was literally that type of situation, cold call get my first couple of clients and you know, we got their projects, we got their money and contacted our contractors and we built beautiful sites. We put out some, some beautiful product because we already knew how to do it, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just took the process and apply it. Right. See, the problem is the problem with, um, with, with most, I guess, scenarios where you're like an employee, is that you're compartmentalized. You don't get to see the whole operation. Yeah. You're either yep. a developer, mm -hmm. you're either a salesperson, you're either a project manager, and that's what you learn. You know, but when you are in a position where you can learn all the divisions, then you know the process. So, so we already knew that. And um, that was the start of it. Where custom-made design really took off, though, is I had come up with a plan to build a subscription business. Because mm -hmm. at this time, there was a company that was killing it that I really admired. It was called uh, like web.com. They had the shittiest websites, template okay. websites. But what I admired is that they would sell these websites $100 down and $100 a month. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I suck at math. I'm no mathematician, Chad. But I said to myself, well, if I can close 10 of these deals a month by the end of the year, on January, I'll be billing 120 clients, $100 each. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we looked at that successful business model, and this is what this is what you have to do in business. You don't have to go recreate the wheel. You have to look at your uh, competitor that's winning, your successful competitor, mm -hmm. and all you have to do is model what they have and put your twist on it. So that's so your what we twist did. Meaning, like innovate and do things better. Because I, I remember like do it better. Do looking it better. at web.com websites. Like one value proposition that we have is we custom tailor fit their website as opposed to what web.com produced during that time, which are you know, a bunch of ugly templates. Cookie cutter uh, templates, right? Yeah, 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 cookie cutter. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, dude. Like 
yeah, that's amazing. So uh, let me just highlight what you mentioned again. Now, if, if you're a business owner and you're looking to start a, a business, look for opportunities of uh, and, and get your, your, your service in a position, or at least one of your service in a position of, of there should be a continuity, a subscription based, um, you know, type of service on top of probably, uh, you know, a windfall in a huge deal. Cause I know, I remember, um, you know, we, we, we sell subscriptions, which is called uh, hybrid solutions during that time. Right. Right, right, right. right. And, that was and our products. That was, yeah, yep, yep. And then we got so infatuated with selling uh, in these, uh, these, what, what, do we call, like the the bigger payout websites. What, what do we call them? Like the we use a custom solutions or something self-hosted. Self, something right. like that. Yeah. Because these cost, like, like for us salespeople the the commission was larger uh and then we used to like target uh, uh medical marijuana collectives and like huge businesses Remember that? In, yeah. in the states and so it's more infatuating to target those and sell those those like custom solutions those like high custom, ticket high ticket, high ticket sales, sales versus the low sales yeah right because of the payout but then again you said okay guys i High ticket sales is good, but our main product and, and the pulse of the company is hybrid solutions. Okay, we, we gotta opt for subscriptions because that's the that, that's what's gonna sustain <laughs> the company. And yeah. kind of like in hindsight, I see that now as someone, you know, as a, a business owner myself. We we ended up selling like three hundred of these things, Chad. <laughs> and you know, we're billing thirty thousand dollars a month and just recurring. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was like, you know, for, for a guy that started off with like no money, basically, you know, screwed in a situation where, you know, it didn't turn out so bad within a few years we were billing, man, big money every month. And it's still big money today, you know, especially if you live in the Philippines, um, where your cost of living is so much lower. So that was, that was the thing that enabled us to grow. See, when you're just going after high ticket sales, yeah, you know your your financial radar it's like this it goes up down mm -hmm. up down right but when you're when you're billing recurring even if yeah. the recurring is low january february march april may there's continual growth and so that's that's the biggest um takeaway there that's why i love that model so i just came up with the idea in my head and i said we're going to sell this we put up the brand we made the offer, we had the pitch, we made the script, you know, called on the phone, we sold the work, we produced the work, we hosted it. Man, it was, um, it was our first su su success. That was wanna... better than joining the Air Force, <laughs> I think, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it worked for, out, for, man. For entrepreneurs. And, and I, I was I, able I just, to take I, I... care of my family. I was able to, you know, um, no worries when it came to money. I'm my own boss now. It's a great, great accomplishment, but it didn't happen overnight. Of course. It did not happen. I, I want to point out something, though, in case people just kind of subconsciously missed it. $30,000 every month, let that sink in. And this is back in 2011, 2012. Um, yeah. This, you know, income, company income, obviously, was uh, uh, revenue was generated by a bunch of 20 year olds like 20 20 21 you're probably 21 during that time pat was 23 yeah. so mm -hmm. that's a lot of money back then it's a lot of money until uh, up you know today and yeah. i just wanted to point that out dude i want to i want to i want to talk about the difficulties in managing uh first of all starting a sales force and managing a sales force i remember when i was learning sales i really hated your your guts during that time obviously the the like my it, the feelings have changed because looking at hindsight like I, again like i didn't i didn't see it i didn't understand what you were trying to instill and how you're trying to mentor me but during that time when i was naive being new at sales i thought this guy is an asshole like i remember one time <laughs> you were trying to coach me and you were straightforward. You didn't sugarcoat. You just tell it as it is. And I, I think my feelings got hurt. Like, 
<laughs> you don't appreciate what I'm trying to do here. And I walked out and then Patrick ran after me and consoled me and said, hey, yeah. dude. Yeah. But uh, yeah, talk to me about the difficulty of starting a self host or is how to mentor them and being that leader, being in a leadership position. So, take Dude, it. so I mean, you're totally right, man. And, <clears throat> you know, I apologize for being such an asshole, but it's just who to. I am, you know. Um, but here's the thing. At that time, I was an inexperienced asshole. <laughs> I did not realize the importance of managers and officers in your company. And so what I was doing was wrong. I was, I was the one interacting with every salesperson, trying to form every salesperson. And the way I should have had this is I should have had a manager in between, and that manager would be the one to foster and nurture my people, like how I have it now. So um, that's, that's the problem, and that's a, what a lot of rookie business people, entrepreneurs do, is they try and force their way upon, you know, their employees. But what I was trying to do, man, I always, I always saw potential in you. Oh, thank you. That's bro. the thing. When I see potential in somebody, I'm going to make sure that, that I'm going to try and get the most out of this person and help this person become a better version. It's not about how much money you can bring in. It's about your growth. Because here's the thing. Here's, here's how I saw it, Chad. I saved myself from the system. When I was, you know, 21 years old, I was already making, uh, 22 years old, I was already making money. All my buddies were still in, you know, college and, and, you know, getting their first jobs. I was already a boss. And so what I, what I realized is, is it's very basic. If I can teach a man how to fish, that man's going to learn how to, you know, he can feed himself. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to fish, somebody's got to give you fish. Sure. That's the difference. So, so I saw potential in you and I was just trying to make it happen. So, um, I hope I didn't disappoint you, man. And I owe you so no, much. No, you, 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 you did that. not, man. Well, look where we are today. You know, it's, it's amazing. And you're, you're one of the guys I look at and I expect to see you in the next 10, 15 years, you're going to mm -hmm. be one of those big shots, you know, with tons of real estate, you know, hopefully I'll be there with you. So, I think um, will. let's talk about sales because that's how you get there. That's how you get there is, yeah. is, is, you know, monetizing and selling a product service, selling attention. Um, that's really my background. That's really my skill set is sales. So uh, the beginnings of it, yeah, I mean, we were a young group of guys all in our 20s, all hungry for money. And um, it was a situation where, okay, guys, here's your way out. We're going to pay you a salary and then you're going to get a commission on every sale. And the more sales you make, right, the more you're going to, the more money you're going to make every month. So um, it's just a, a matter of, how do I say this? Setting it up. There's, there's so many things in sales. There's, there's the recruitment, there's the hiring, there's the training, yeah. there's the, the scripts, there's the pitches, but more importantly, most importantly, you got to have the product. You can't, you can't, you can have the greatest salesperson in the world, but if you're selling a product that nobody wants, that the market hasn't validated, that the market's not willing to pay for, you're not going to succeed. So it's a very tricky game. That's why how, they don't do teach sales in school. How do you get market validation then? How do you figure out? Uh, a product? The, the way to get market validation is to be able to actually sell the product. Okay. You know, you have to be able to prove. So at that time we were selling to business owners, right? Mm. We would, we would call them mm. on the phone. We would say, Hey, I found you um, online. I checked out your site. I noticed it's just like a cookie cutter web.com template. Let me ask you a question, you know, um, and then you go into your, you go into your yeah. spiel. Yeah. Yeah. You keep it short. And if they show interest, yes, yes, Brian, I would love to upgrade my site. I've been thinking about this for a long time you know, and, and, and you get the lead and then you close the lead, right? That's how you get market validation. So what? if somebody's actually willing to buy the product, that's it. But that's the hardest part. Oftentimes when starting a business is people focus on building the product before they go out and get market validation. Okay. People want to peep. This is where they make the mistake the most. And this, we all make the same mistake. 
and I'm going to use an example of like building an app because we built a couple apps. The first apps that we built, mm -hmm. you know, we were, we got into it with a bunch of uh, rookies and they were, we worked on this app for six or seven months before we finally launched it and released it. Okay. And it was, you know, a total failure. I think I know what app are you referring to. I'm not going to say it, but okay. It was the, it was the POD app. Yeah. But you know, they focused so much on having the product ready that the audience was never validated. Sure. You know, just like how people think, Oh, I'm going to make sure my business is perfect before I actually start making my first call and trying to sell it. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll get on the phone with a prospect. I'll figure out what they need first. I'll ask some good, great yeah, yeah, questions yeah. to get that information <clears throat> and I'll come up with something to sell on the spot and a then I'll market make it. fit product exactly. market fit. There's a fantastic book that I just want to real quickly and check guys check yeah. out lean startup. It's an amazing book and it's exactly what Brian is talking about. Uh, the book talks about it more in the, Oh, there you go. Like fucking yeah. Dude. Yeah, man. yeah I'm Brian, ready. Brian is a, a, a reader. Definitely. Very cool. Yeah. Bro. Awesome. Yo. So, so yeah. Uh, get market validation, uh, start lean. Um, you have to, you need to have like a minimum viable product, test out, see if your market niche really needs it, get the feedback, close the feedback loop, pivot or scale. So yeah. Damn, you got that down to a, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, that's exact. And there, you know, it's interesting because as we talk and I know I'm not the best communicator in the world, but there's actually some golden nuggets here. And what we're talking about, because um, that alone is worth, you know, it's, that's how you start your business. You got to get market validation first. Don't build your product first. Talk to your audience, figure out what your audience needs, figure out how to serve your clients and then make something for them. And I see people mm -hmm. have that very twisted. They, ha they have it the other way around. They fall in um, love but with yeah, the we, product, right? And that clouds their judgment. Exactly, exactly. And so, and so once you have that market validation, then you can begin to hire your salespeople. I didn't, I didn't hire my salespeople and say, Hey, we're going to build hybrid solutions. No, I built hybrid solutions first, mm -hmm. sold a few. And then I say, okay, I'm going to bring in one or two people. And, and what I learned when building a sales force is you always hire in pairs. You always either get okay. two, you either get four, six or eight. With my latest team that I built, my, I wanted to have four really good people, Why is so that? I hired eight. Why is that? But I see the pattern because when I went, uh, w when I jumped in custom made design, it was me and Giselle, right? Yeah. But uh, and our predecessors, not predecessors, but the one that came before us were, were Jason and Miguel Dylan. So why? But yeah. why? What's the principle behind it? Well, here's the thing. So if you're training a sales team, right? And let's say. Um, let's say you're the boss and you just hire me and I come to you for a job. Okay. And now you're in a situation where I say, okay, boss, what are you going to teach me? You know, how do I sell this product? And so you're training me, you're investing your time day after day after day. And what if I get sick, you know, and what if I don't mm -hmm. show up to work or what if I quit, you just lost your whole investment. So you always have to do two people. And if you want two people, you have to hire four people because half of them won't make it. They'll drop off. Oh, okay. So, so that's the, um, that's what you have to do. <laughs> Very important in sales. Um, you know, and you shouldn't, if you're the boss, you shouldn't be the one training your own sales force. You should have your manager in place first, basically. So, you know, there's certain things that I figured out through the years, what works, what doesn't work, but that's why you hire in pairs. That's why you hire in waves versus one person. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So that's, and that's I think it. there's, there's also this, this healthy competition knowing that you and some other dude or do that for that matter, or uh, like two people, two other people, there's this healthy competition. Okay. Look at this guy and exactly. say, I want to do better. And there's this healthy competition. Let's talk about like it. Let's talk about the Chad mobile and, and the rough occasions during the time we were, uh, Oh, during know. the typhoon. What was that, man? Yeah. Was that typhoon Yolanda? I, I probably like, I, I don't even pay oh attention God. to the name anymore because we get so many typhoons in the Philippines from August to December. And yeah. you know, 
it was first okay guys imagine this we were in 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 a home setting so it was a three-story house um Brian, Brian Pass house along with the other uh, Murphy brothers the whole family there and what they did was they converted the entire first floor of the house as the home office and so I think the kitchen was the uh, uh, the, the development area that's where the engineers are and then it might it might have been the master suite I remember because it was like a, 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 a toilet and bath it was a huge room and that's where, where the sales force are. <laughs> and yeah. every so often, like every fucking 30 minutes uh, or an hour, we had to make phone calls. I, I know you had like several PLDT lines during that time because because we needed backup lines, right? Accounts in case yeah. the one, one PLDT line goes down, you know, the, the business wouldn't shut down for that time. But there was this one night that we had to call every, you know, every hour they said, hey you know we don't have internet connection again and it got worse until we made a decision to jump into chat mode it was a 97 uh 79 toyota uh, crown which is currently being restored today uh crown. and yeah yeah dude, let's <laughs> walk us through the experience man man did, geez what a story so at this time this is this is in our early early days in the company so this was in uh, Camp 7, Baguio City. Yeah. We decided to rent a big house, yeah, right? Yeah. So there's big three-story, uh, beautiful um, wooden house, you know, and we did it Chinese style. We ran our business on the first floor, second floor. I think that Pat's, that's where he lived with his family, and then I lived on, up on the third floor. And then every night, because we work at nights, our customers are in the U.S., we're in the first, you know, the first floor and it was, yeah. you know, working out of the main, you know, the whole area, just utilizing it. So we got hit by a typhoon. So our operations ceased, our internet lines were down. I think literally what happened is a tree fell on the mm -hmm. line. Yeah. And so there's no internet. And, you know, we're in a position to where, man, we're living week by week, whatever we make that week, that's what we're paying our, our employees, man. So it's the situation now where I'm in a leadership position and you're there <laughs> and Miggs is there and yeah. Jason's there yeah, and yeah. we got a you know young group of guys. I think Giselle was there too. And she was. And um, we're in the situation where all of a sudden it's do or die. There's no internet. We, There's we, internet in town. Yeah, There's we're no hopping internet from at the one house. Internet cafe to another. So we uh, get in the Chad mobile <laughs> and, you know, Chad, you're driving the Crown Vic, you know, <laughs> that looks like the, um, what the Dukes of Hazard, you know, yeah. the freaking Dukes of Hazard <laughs> car. car. We're going, we're going, you know, it's like a pimp car and we're going through the Baguio streets at night, you know, 11, 12 midnight. And we're looking for these internet cafes to work out of because there's no, yeah. there's no internet, man. We don't have the internet. How are we going to call our customers? How are sure. we going to do business? And so that was our contingency from, plan. <laughs> that was that. There was no contingency there plan. Was, yeah. <laughs> that was the, that was the plan. We had to make a, a sudden move. So we're going from internet place, uh, internet cafe to internet cafe. And I remember just going all over town, going outside of town, yeah. seeing who could take us in because we would go into these places and, you know, just imagine, you know, four or five people get out of a car, sedan, and then we're going into their cafe with our headsets and then yeah. we're calling people and then we're, we're taking down credit card credit numbers card and then we're leaving. Those we look like a bunch of scammers, scammers man. Yeah. Like, like, like professional scam artists. <laughs> Fly by you night, know? folks. I remember this one time we walked into this huge cafe. It's probably one of the biggest during that time. It was about 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. We walked in. The place smelled like vomit. People, you know, were, you know, on, on the seat sof sofas. Smelled like, like a mix of vomit and, and liquor. Some of them passed out. I saw a guy oh. hitting on a girl. And, you know, I was, just, one time I was taking down a card number. But before I, I, I asked for the comment, people were playing games like people here in Philly's like, so they were playing games. And when they like, they, they, they get, 
you know, carried away with a fucking gay. They, they cuss. But good thing they cuss in Filipino, but it, they still shout like, Botana! I was like, mother. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so let's 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 get rock and roll. What you gotta use uh, Mastercard or Visa? So that was the situation was very funny, but again, that was the contingency plan back then. It was a very funny situation, but it, we we did what it take to to keep the business going. I remember you. Go, I remember that man. I remember you going off on these guys because they they were playing that Dota game and they would Dota, chair. Yeah. It was like tw- there's like twenty or thirty people, man, two teams, <laughs> and Chad just be like, Shut up. and then he'd get back on the phone and close the deal. It'd be hilarious. But I, um, dude, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of us because I am too. It showed that you know you. You are willing, I'm willing, my team members are willing to do whatever it takes to succeed. And, and look at the guys on the team, on that initial pioneer team. Yeah. They're all successful guys. For sure. They're all guys that know how to, that know how to fish. They know how to get clients. They, they make their money online, every single one of them. You I know? think sales should be taught in school. I mean, most people have this antiquated conventional and very superficial and linear way of yeah. looking at sales most people think that sales is just really okay i have a product i have a service i'm going to sell it to you give me money but really at, at the most essential and fundamental level in, in my opinion what we sell all the time whether from a traditional standpoint or a non-traditional standpoint non-traditional standpoint being like we sell to we sell the value of education to our children we sell um um you know the church like sells the value of whatever the religion is salvation salvation yeah. that's a product like the evangelist man these are one of the best people i would think like the pastors oh, with the, huge the, stadium those, yeah the wealth pastors yeah dude. The, those the joel olstein people yeah, oh, yeah, the biggest, yeah, yeah. Con, biggest con artists you know um i agree yeah we, we sell we sell everything in the society yet the salesperson gets a bad rap why because the thing is that there's this stereotype of a sleazy salesperson that just snake wants oil. your money. Yeah. Snake oil, you know, car, old car, used car salesman, stereotype, t- Indian telemarketer sales type. <laughs> remember, yeah. your, remember Alvin's, Alvin John Viduya's Indian accent? Oh God, it was hilarious. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, Philippines, we took over the Indians in the, in the, uh, in the calling market, you know, the um, industry. But um, the thing about it is, even look what's happening today with coronavirus. We're all, dude, this coronavirus thing is crazy. It's, it's it, 2020, you know, has been a crazy year and everybody's quarantined in their house. The economy ha- is crashing, you know, all over the world. It's crashing. Three and a half million people claimed for unemployment. And so who's moving the money in the economy? The salespeople are. Yeah. The salespeople are. Man, these people, everyone, everyone's businesses are shut down right now. I feel terrible about the restaurants, the 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 bakers, the barbers, mm. you know, the chiropractors, uh, everything is shut down outside. Everything where you used to be able to walk into a store and buy something, they're shut down. So the economy is crashing. So who's making money? It's the salespeople moving product. Who's yeah. staying in business? And so that's just why I'm so grateful to be able to be in this position where I can still continue to make thousands of dollars every night, you know, using my headset, using a computer and internet connection, because, you know, it's like I have my own little digital empire, you know. Um, but that's, that's the thing about sales. It's underappreciated, man. It's very underappreciated. Yep. Sales moves the economy, moves I the money agree. Dude, around. you know you know my story and a lot of my ups and downs, you know, my roller coaster journey, you, you know a couple of times where I like went up to you and said, hey, Brian, I'm completely wiped out right now. But uh, what, I wouldn't be as confident and as optimistic as I am if I hadn't learned sales. Quite frankly, I'm not even worried about 
like because I'm a late bloomer, dude. Like I, I see guys who easily learn things, but I'm the type of person who really marinates on whatever you, you know. If, say mm-hmm. for example, I'm trying to learn a business. It, it, it. I'm not a fast learner. I take a little bit of time, but when I understand like kind of the matrix of it and the whole of it, that's when I take off. But right. If if I, I I wouldn't be as confident as I am if I hadn't learned sales. And again, like thank 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 you guys for what being part of 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 again the genesis of the company. What's no knowing what you know now with the corona, uh, well, with your experience and considering the situation with the coronavirus, what would be like the top three advice that you would give to people who want to start their own business let's let's start with that yeah so you know just to kind of preface that if you observe if you look around at what has happened um all around man even the business owners are are going down if you're not in the Mm -hmm. right industry so i would say you know top tips is number one you got to be on the internet you got to be online the whole economy is crashed. You got to be online. What if we get hit with another pandemic? What if this thing, you know, takes six months, which I hope it won't. Uh, but that's that's the major thing is you got to shift your economy. You got to you got to shift your business model on the internet so that you're not just doing business with people face to face or doing business with people in one location. You have to be able to get your product out there. So whether that's mm-hmm. e-commerce or whether that is a digital agency business or whether it's a consultation business or mm. whatever it is over the phone, over the internet, over, over tools like this with zoom, anybody yeah. can do business like this. Sure. So, so number one, recognize that you got to be on the internet. Um, tip number two is you have to be able to stay lean. A lot of people think that when you start your business, you need to have a lot of money to start. And I would argue that one of our blessings is that we didn't have any money to start. So naturally we had to learn how to make money. Okay. A lot of people will, will take out a business loan. You'll see this a lot. They'll take out a $50,000 business loan, personal loan. They'll, you know, put, get a place, they'll put down a mm-hmm. shop or whatever, and they'll invest their money without actually having ever sold the product. So the first, uh, the second thing is, Figure out the market uh, product validation. Figure out if mm-hmm. it's there. Do and people actually sales. want what you're trying to sell, right? And learn sales. Learn sales because if you don't have sales, you're screwed. I'm sorry, but if you don't if you don't know how to sell your product and if you don't at least have a basic level of internet marketing, uh, and you understand like things like branding and positioning and mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it's difficult, right? The third thing would be um, pick your niche. You got to be in the right niche. So your customers that you're servicing, you got to make sure, for example, like look what happened to all the gyms. All the gyms are shut down, right? Mm -hmm. So all of my customers, because I work with digital agencies and I do their work for them with my fulfillment center, but all of their clients shut down. So on the day of the announcement of the pandemic, I lost like four clients. And, you know, this guy lost his entire agency. He was in the wrong niche, right? So be online, pick the right niche, learn sales, basically, is what I would say. Or at least have a business to to those who are truly passionate with like helping people be healthy. That's why they started gyms or, you know, really like traditional brick and mortar businesses, I guess one of the things that you're, you're saying is that have a supplement business that is up in the cloud that is online. That way you have this sustain sustainability. Like, in any, like for right. example, so if you're like a gym owner, right? Mm-hmm. What you should be doing is you should, instead of, instead of just, you know, sitting on your butt worrying how long this thing is going to take and eating your money, what you should be doing is building an informational product teaching people how to do at home workouts Boom. selling a membership course, you, you, know? Uh, it, <laughs> you know, so, so it's about leveraging those things. You know, if you're a chiropractor, um, same thing, teach people how to, how to improve themselves. 
you know, from home. So there, you just have to get creative in, in the in the method of in the delivery method of the service. Right. And still give the service, but it's just the the delivery method needs to be online. You know. Figure out a way to to digitize, uh, like a it's information. Content. Yep. You, you can sell information, you can sell physical products, you can sell a service, you know, you can sell a productized service. There's all sorts of different things that you can do. And look, I understand that this is not going to apply to everybody because everybody's different. Sure. But um, especially now, I think with the newer generation, especially now, these, these guys, it's all about digital. It's all about being online. So now, I just hope we don't get taken out by a coronal mass injection because then we're screwed you know, because oh. we need the internet. Yeah. 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 So, so what are your top three uh, advice for um, people, for freelancers or people who are in, let's say call center agents, if they were to acquire a skill, what would those three skills be? If they want to go, if it um, Okay. So if you're a call center agent, I will say this, I will say this, there's, there's basically two branches, just kind of like a video game, right? You evolve your character, you get two choices. You either get high level, you either get sales mm -hmm. or you either get customer service or customer success, right? So there's, there's two ways to be successful. So if you're a call center agent and you're in an outbound campaign, for those of you who are doing outbound calls, get really good at that. That's a core skill. If you know how to do outbound campaigns, that means that you can fish. Get good at appointment setting. Get mm -hmm. good at prospecting. And the level beyond that is closing, which most people never even get to. They never even get to the you know, point where they're closing mm -hmm. on an actual product. Um, so that's a skill for those of you who are in, who are in customer service, you know, um, customer retention is a great field. It's a, it, cause it's, you're working with existing customers and now you can upsell existing customers, right? So you're still selling, but you're either selling from the inside with existing customers or you're selling and you're getting new customers. So either one of those are, are pretty darn good skill sets to have. You can learn a lot. What about the ones who are like, okay, and this is not limited to uh, call center agents. That's the one that I just sort of reflex, reflexively and immediately went to because it was, it was, aside from being a salesperson, that was my only real job. Uh, now, what, what, uh, what about for those who want to sort of cross the chasm, meaning they are in you know, their, their current job, but they're not happy, but can't figure out what skill set to train for. At, from, from an employer's spec, uh, perspective, what are you guys looking for? What's, what's important for you when you're, you're hiring? What skill sets are you looking for? So when, when hiring, and this has been one of the lessons, um, you're not looking for skills as much as you're looking for attitude. Okay. Because Skills can be transferred. Sure. They can be transferred, but attitude cannot be transferred. Attitude is something you, you come with. So when I'm interviewing somebody, what I'm, it's weird, man. It's like sales. In the first four seconds, I'm judging the person. I'm saying, okay, oh, okay. This is a person worth listening to. So it's your ability to persuade others to sell yourself that you're a person of value is the main thing. If you want to get a job, position yourself as a person of value, position yourself as a person who's done what that person is looking for. And maybe you've done it with a different company before, but come in with a strong attitude. No one likes a boring person. You sure, want somebody yeah. with personality. You want somebody with some charisma, some enthusiasm. <clears throat> um, it's like what Jordan Belfort says, man, totally right. He says in the first four seconds of the conversation, right. your prospect needs to know three things. They got to know, number one, you're sharp as a tack. Number two, you're enthusiastic as hell. Number three, you're an expert in your field. You know, that's, that's, how it, that's how it is in real life and anything. People want, you need to be perceived in a, as an expert. Even if you don't know what you're talking about, you at least need to be perceived 
as someone who knows what they're talking about, right? So right. that's that's what's important um, in is general persuasion, but attitude, you know, attitude is the main thing when hiring. I, I agree with you. Skill is something that you can easily duplicate, but attitude and, and how a person behaves is something that is sort of rare. So when when I was consulting with uh, my client now, they're, they're like a, a huge development company here, a uh, real estate development company here in the Philippines. They asked for my advice on what, uh, like how to hire a sales person and a marketing person, because we looked at, you know, several candidates and they were quite not what I would personally hire. I told them hire for personality uh, and attitude because train can ease, uh, skill can easily be trained. Um, so do like in closing, and I'm sure we'll, we'll probably have a second episode for this. I just want to ask a couple more quick questions. Um, are you guys- I got time, dude. I made time for you. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, so there you go. Like, okay. Are you guys currently, I know with the situation, but when and after the smoke clears out, are you hiring? I'm hiring right now. Right, right now. now. My dude, you know, it's crazy. Um, uh, my <clears throat> business, I, I, I haven't let go of a single person in my company. I, I am loyal to my people. Everyone is, is getting paid. Everyone has a job still. Um, I know agencies, look at Grant Cardone's agency, man, gone. He fired everybody. He did? Grant Cardone. He fired all, everybody in Cardone agency. Shit, I didn't it's, know uh, that. all over the social media. I right? stopped following him because of his, implode, when he imploded during the interview with Jordan Belfort. I looked up to this guy, oh. I got a couple of his books, yeah. but I lost respect to him after I watched the interview. But I digress. So, okay. Wow. Okay. We'll talk about that, I guess, uh, more since you mentioned that you have time. So, so, so then let's talk about you. Okay. You mentioned that you still have your employees and I take it that your in-office employees are currently working from home. Everybody's from home. Everybody's okay. working from home. Yeah. Let's talk about and that. I had to make, dude, that was, that was, uh, the most, that was, that was a quick decision when this shit hit the fan. And they said, hey, you can no longer, we're going to go on lockdown. You know, my officers, you know, I call them off. The way I structure my companies, I have officers and uh, most of my officers are women. I really you like, haven't fired you know, single, women. no, no, not, not a single layoff. Let me just make that clear. No, no, not uh, a single person. Your employees are probably, if not the happiest, one of the happiest people uh, or human beings Amid the I'm not situation. saying I'm not saying we didn't take a hit because we did take a hit this month. Sure. You know, sure. We took a hit, but it's unethical to just drop your employees after <laughs> years of service and say, okay, adios, you're on your own. And that's what a lot of employers did. It, it, it makes me sick, wow. you know? So if you got money, take care of your employees, man, Respect, take care, bro. take, take care of, take care of your people and they'll take care of your customers. That's the main thing. So what did we do? Well, we just told everybody, well, work from home. And those people that needed uh, to get a stable internet connection, we got them routers and we got them the equipment and they're working from home. And we manage everything through Discord, chats. We were online already. That's the beauty of being online. We were yeah. already online. So the business didn't, it didn't, didn't even register as a blip. On the sales, we took a hit. Okay. But everybody is, you know, everybody is working. Amazing. Operations are moving forward smooth. And um, it is. But what's even more amazing is you have these other guys and, you know, they just, even if they were online, they still let go of their people. So it's just, you know, it's a tough situation, Chad, man. It is a tough situation. I did groceries today. And I waited an hour <laughs> and a half to get into the grocery store. I saw your and, Facebook post, bro. That was funny. Oh, with the Indians? Yeah. Dude, the, we got... No, the, 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 what was the Hunger Games? When you get Oh, the Hunger to... Games? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I posted another one with the, um, the Indian police slapping people on the ass, whacking them with these sticks. Hilarious video. It's not going to fly here uh -huh. in the Philippines. A lot of bozos over it. Okay. So, what was, so, so you went out 
grocery shopping, one and a half hour wait. Dude, these these are some desperate uh, times in the Philippines. <laughs> We've been off. We've been off. Uh, people have been out of work for not even two weeks, and they're already, you know, people getting mugged in the streets, people breaking into unsecured Shit. homes. It looks like people waiting in lines to get food, and then they've got no money. So people, even if the coronavirus doesn't kill you, you know, you're either going to go bankrupt or you're going to starve. So it it's it's a really tough situation. So I'm just very grateful uh, that I'm in this position to be able to continue to provide. And I think that's what, that's what I'm very proud of because I'm always, I've always looked at myself as a provider. I'm providing for my family. I'm providing for my company. I'm providing for the people that I need to take oh. care of. So, you know, as a salesperson, I, ta I take that responsibility. I don't take it lightly, you know. So that's, it's, it's, it's mentality. It's really what's going to get you through these times, I think. Chad is, it's going to be your own power of will. It's going to be your own perspective. You're either going to go on attack or you're going to go on defense and curl up. And so this is the time where Warren Buffett says, when, when, when in times of fair, be greedy. And in times of uh, greediness, be, uh, be fearful. He says something like this. Yeah, yeah. So there's people that will walk out of this crisis. That that still goes back to the art of war, Sun Tzu. You're yeah, the opposite. Exactly. Okay, but yeah. go ahead, dude. I just I want to Sun Tzu, interject. man. Yeah, yeah. Dude, okay. So really quickly, let's just um uh, one of the things that we want to do, and and one of the essences of of this this whole initiative, right? WealthX movement is to yeah. hopefully add value and help people out there. You mentioned that you guys are hiring. I'm not sure how many people are you hiring or new employees are you hiring and what you're hiring for but can we talk a little bit about that i mean what are you looking for yeah so i'm i'm, I'm looking for um it's funny because this whole thing has opened up the opportunity now that we don't need people in our office so okay. i just hired um a great customer service rep mm -hmm. uh yesterday phenomenal she's going to be calling all my customers and before i couldn't hire these people because they all had jobs. Now a lot of people are out of the jobs. So there's mm. a lot of talented people in the okay. market. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so I, and, and the other thing that's changed is I don't need them in my office. So now I'm not landlocked. So it's opened up a whole new train of thought and it, it goes very well for us. We're just able to do it. So I'm looking for uh, salespeople. I'm always looking for salespeople. I'm looking for, uh, we just hired a designer you know, going to do per project with her. We just did, uh, got another developer on. What, like project. a graphic designer for what? You know, to, um, to design, you know, we're Websites? looking for a graphic designer. Yeah. Websites um, needs to be really good with fonts. I think Patrick found somebody, but we're always open uh, to yeah. doing that. I'm looking for VAs. I'm, I'm opening up a VA service and um, basically selling VA services to agencies. So that's another thing I'm looking for. You mean virtual and, assistants? Uh, yeah. Okay. Virtual assistants. So salespeople, cold callers, appointment setters, uh, developers, marketing people. I'm looking for people who know who uh, have Facebook ad skills, Google ad skills. Um, so yeah, everything that I've always looked for anyway. Is what Would I'm looking you be for now. willing to train? What What if, say for example, we we upload this and we will, and you know people are interested. I guess one of their questions is that what if, you know they they because we talked about attitude, right? And you know that that whole thing. Uh, would Would you be willing to? to train in, in case, okay, they have the right attitude and mindset, but they, their knowledge when it comes to, say, for example, Facebook as a superficial, would you guys be willing to train that person or what's the situation there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. We, we, we have all the SOPs in our business, the standard okay. operating procedures. So everything's documented. So this is awesome. we can take a person who wants to learn something and they can just go through the steps. Um, yeah. And then there's other people who are already professionals. They already know what they're doing. So mm -hmm. we contract with them. So, man, it's, it's, it, it, it's an opportunity for a lot of people to grow because here's the thing. The way I see this, Chad, all these people are out of jobs now. They realize it's not rocket science. I got to be online. 
Yeah. So you're going to see a huge surge, a huge influx of new businesses, uh -huh. new people going into e-com, going into digital agency, going into informational products, yeah. going into podcasting. You know, you're going to start to see a lot of that. Sure. And if you can position yourself as a person of value who helps those people, then you'll get rich during this crisis. That's basically. awesome. I'm going to post a link. I'm, obviously, I'm going to retrieve the link for you after this podcast, uh, yeah, video podcast, and I'm going to post it on the description to guys who want to apply. And I'll be getting a more detailed, like, itemized uh, info of what um, Linkage Philippines and Murphy Consulting uh, is, is looking for and hiring for. Uh, and you guys just, like, submit your resume. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity. Uh, a lot of guys will still not take the opportunity for some reason, but to those who will, like just this, this is a perfect opportunity, just not both short, short term and long term, short term, you know, you, you, you're going to get employed, nice money, long term, you're, you're going to learn from a fantastic person, a great mentor and grow with a company and hopefully somewhere down the road, like five, 10 years, you start your own agency or however you want to take your career path. Yeah. Um, so, okay, dude, like what's next for, for you guys now that you've achieved like a, a lot of things, what's, what's next for, for you? Dude, honestly, after 10 years, man, I'm, I'm just getting started, man. You are. It's, I don't see this as, as I've achieved anything, man. What I've achieved is insignificant to what other people have achieved, but they say you shouldn't compare yourself with other people. Mm -hmm. Just compare yourself to, you know, who you were the day before. So what's next for me is I'm going to try and um, I'm, I just launched a new membership subscription <clears throat> for agencies. If you, so somebody can literally start their business. If somebody wants to start their online agency, mm -hmm. go to murphyconsulting.us and click on, click on the sign up button. And we have a, fe a phenomenal membership program mm -hmm. where if you have the skills, if you know how to sell, you can work with us and you can just start selling product and we'll do all of your fulfillment. Um, it's the way to start your business. I have a video there. I show where people have made hundreds of thousands of dollars partnering with Murphy consulting, you know, and selling services. So we, we've helped other agencies, um, the other thing I have is I have a VA service called well, Team hold, Pass. Hold on for a second. This this consult this this I, I, from what I'm getting is it an affiliate uh, type of of deal? It's a membership program. Membership program. So, Who is yeah. this for, and why is this important for that person that this is ideally for? Uh, this is this is for people who are either running their own digital agencies okay. or people who are thinking <laughs> about running their own digital agencies. You know. And there's going to be a lot of those people in the coming months. There's a lot of people right now. So basically what we do is we give them a platform called agency dashboard. So as soon as they sign up, they get their own dashboard. Uh, they have their own products. They have their own services. They can sell them. Uh, they can turn that into their own uh, additional product called agency storefront. So now everything that we offer, all the 15 different services, the web design, the landing pages, the SEO, the social media marketing, yeah. the Facebook ads, the Google ads, all that stuff is already packaged and my customers can just take that and now they can offer these services and With sell these services. Using their at own a brand. 200, using their own brand at a 200% so, markup. Wow. So they're making some serious money. So this is okay. So, so guys, to put it in simple perspective, this is like white labeling. No, when you have uh, like a, a, a really great quality, but really affordable product out from Japan or from, from China or, or something. This is what a lot of uh, like perfume uh, businesses do. They take the mm -hmm. product, take out the, the brand and white label it to, to their brand. And so this is pretty, right. this is something pretty similar, right? Exactly. It's the same analogy. So we built, we build these beautiful products and we build them for our customers and they put their logo on it and you know, they sell and they're able to sell what we talked about with the hybrid solutions, by yeah, the yeah. way, that I built for myself. We have that available within our membership. So now if you wanted to sell websites and make recurring money and get the work fulfilled, we have that. So you can, you can basically duplicate our success 
everything okay. that took us all these years to achieve, you can go on our system and you can duplicate it, basically. I think I'm going to personally check that out seriously because uh, it sounds very yeah. interesting. Um, and thanks for sharing that, bro. Like, uh, that, that's for me, I think that's a huge opportunity. I hope everybody who watches video sees the same huge opportunity like I do. You also mentioned something about VA. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, it's um, Team Pass is the, is the brand uh, for the VA service. And so what I'm doing, because I, I realize this is the time now, many mm -hmm. people are out of jobs, is I'm going to be getting jobs for very talented people. Um, it can be all around the world, but I'm going to focus here in the Philippines. Sure. Because I know we got some very talented fellow countrymen who, who really need jobs right now. Thousand and I'm going to hook them up. I'm going to hook them up with employers in the U S with agencies specifically. Mm. And so what the VAs are going to be doing is they're going to be doing cold calling. They're going to be doing appointment setting. They're going to be taking in calls, whatever that business owner needs, whatever that agency owner needs, you know, we're going to be setting them up. So imagine if you're partnering with Murphy and then I said, Hey Chad, let me get somebody to cold call for you. You close the deals. We'll fulfill your work. So it goes all the round, all the way around. And so I want to become a person of value uh, that, that helps other people succeed. And that's really what it is long term. I think the people who get to that level of success is because they help other people become successful. Except for that Jeff Bezos bastard. That is a greedy guy, that Jeff Bezos. Why, why do you think so? Like, uh, what, is that an article that because, you read or what? Because this guy, this he, Chad, he's got so much money. His, you know he could have like, where are you living right now? You're living on like a mountain or something. Me? Imagine I, your, imagine okay. your house on top of a mountain. And then <laughs> just imagine dollar bills stacked like fucking Scrooge yeah, yeah. McDuck. That's how much money this guy has. <laughs> exactly. And, 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 <laughs> and, and is asking for donations so that he could pay his employees, you know, benefits. I, it's just crazy. Is he? So like it, if you're going to, Man, I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure his 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 a man of value. He's helped a lot of people make millions. But you know, when you have trillions like that, mm. it's um. I think I feel like you should be helping out more. I feel like I feel like Bezos should basically, uh, you know, he should do something during this pandemic, during this yeah, coronavirus. Yeah, dude, he's the richest guy on the planet with a valuation, a net worth of I, I think a hundred twenty plus billion. Before it was, it was I think two hundred billion or something. Don't take my word for it. Go research. But and then he got a divorce or something. <laughs> so he got split. <laughs> so, Dude, that okay. that that's that's that that's a st <laughs> we could go down that rabbit hole. But imagine being Jeff Bezos, man, richest man in the world. You know, he's got he's got that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got like four kids. He he shacked up with the uh the hot young Putang and um he got <laughs> he got jacked. He got he got jacked. But she didn't get half. She didn't get half. She didn't. Yeah. Did but she that's get half? Still like uh, it's yeah. it's still probably worth in, in billions, man. Like that now that's an investment, dude. Now that that's a funny thing is marriage, man, because you know, it's like, hey, if you ever become successful, man, one billion dollars, better watch out. You're gonna get jacked. You, you know? mean when? You when? When and after? When? <laughs> when and after? When and after? Yeah. And the woman's just like, yeah, I made, I made all this. <laughs> but you know, I'm not gonna get into there into that. Oh, that. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, that's that's pretty interesting. Um, okay, so let's talk about Cardone laying off like what happened there well i don't know man this guy's always bragging about his billions of dollars and uh, whatever but you know he uh he laid off his his agency cardone agency cardone university from what i heard and what i saw on the groups because there's people looking for jobs yeah, yeah. yeah there was these posts it's like hey yeah i was a sales agent for cardone we all got laid off we're looking for jobs and so that's what i heard but you know, Cardone's in real estate, so the real maybe the real estate industry is tanked a little bit. But it's just amazing to me how somebody with you know 
with, with the money he claims to have just lays off their whole their entire workforce uh, in a time like this. It just seems to me like unethical. I think his you know? net worth is about half half a billion Cardone. Um, He's got a five hundred million dollars. Wow. I think so, more or less. That's that's very interesting to know. And again, I, like I said, I stopped following this guy. Um, now, to yeah. those who are still, you know, doing business as usual, but took a hit because of this pandemic. Um, and again, we're talking about businesses. Like, how how can you help this these guys, um, Murphy Consultant? Per, um, how can Murphy Consulting add value to these business owners who took a hit and might be looking for a, a solution? Well, you know, the thing with Murphy Consulting is we just focus on helping other agencies. We're very specific. And the agencies that we help, they help other businesses, basically. So uh, we're getting everybody online. We're a company that, that takes businesses online. And this is a time where more than ever, more, you know, probably than and any other time in the history of our civilization, people need to be online, you know, this is the time. So that's what we're doing. We're helping to get people branded. We're building their websites online. Mm -hmm. We're getting them leads. We're running Facebook campaigns to help sell their services, Google ads campaigns, you know, social media to raise awareness, SEO to, to get traffic. So we're doing all of these things, you know, to help businesses. But the, the thing is, the biggest realization that people can come to, especially right now, if you run a business or if you're thinking about starting a business, it's that you need to be online. You need to find a good niche you can service. You, you need to find a good product market fit and you need to be able to sell your service and help because if you can't sell, you can't help anybody. Right. That's just, just the reality. You know? And guys, selling is not just like getting on the phone or, uh, you know, walking in person and pitch your product. No. Sales can be like there's there, there there's this thing called copywriting. That's also sales. You don't have to be talking per sale, but you can be a great copywriter. And I know a lot of people who are great copywriters and you know making tons of money. Um, so, all right. Well, dude, in in conclusion, it's been a fantastic conversation. Really, thanks for doing this. Yeah, man. Hope, Thank you. Of course. Yeah. It's a pleasure, bro. Gratis. Uh, or grazie, is what I should say. Um, grazie. Grazie. Um, and, 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 and to you guys who are still watching up until this point, uh, thank you. But, Brian, in conclusion, um, say to um, people who are watching this who are expi uh, aspiring uh employees of yours or freelancers or people who are kind of torn between okay like i am in a company and i'm not happy but i'm just really scared and i don't know how how to take the first step you know those those people speak to those people what would be your top three or five advice uh just to point them towards the the right direction Man, that's, uh, that, that's a tough one because everybody's got their own journey. Everybody's got their mm -hmm. own story. But if you're an aspiring business person, if you're somebody, you know, who is uh, just trying to make it, I would say the first thing you can do is just take care of yourself, man. Take care of your mental health. Take care of your okay. physical health. Get some exercise. Eat good yeah. food. Read a couple books. Dig into your interests, you know, of... Uh, Get into a zone where you're uncomfortable. I think that's the biggest thing. I think I people think so. are, you know, they're so used to their bubble, to their comfort zone, that it's it's hard for them to succeed. I did a Facebook post about this. I said the, the it's, it's interesting to see how different countries deal with the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. The U.S. they give everybody twelve hundred dollars a month. You know, I think that's if you're single. If you're married, it's fifteen hundred, and if you're a kid, it's five hundred. <laughs> In the Philippines. We got a kilo of rice, you know, and then India, you know, they're getting slapped with these sticks. That's how they're <laughs> dealing with it. Right. Get, it's hilarious. In North Korea, you're getting shot, you know, if you got the virus. So it, it's, you know, 
you just got to put things into perspective. I think a lot of people uh, have a huge sense of entitlement. They think they're owed something. They think, right. you know, it's going to come to, nothing is going to come to you. You have to make, you have to, you have to take action. You know, you have two, to take action. Two things I just want to like kind of highlight uh, before I forget. And then you can close your thought is that you mentioned something about comfort zone. There's this really fantastic quote. I forgot uh, who is it from, but they say that the best things that happen in life happens outside of one's comfort zone. And that's true in many ways. Number two, you mentioned something about entitlement. <clears throat> um, guys, remember Brian, Brian's, uh, Brian's mom is a very successful nurse in the US. His dad is a seasoned real estate investor. But when this moment of truth happened to him, which is him uh, getting Miko pregnant, he made it work from himself. He didn't like ran up to daddy and, and say, hey, dad, you know, I, 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 something happened and I need your help, which I think most people, you know, will yeah. do. But Brian... So, so that speaks a lot about, you know, you are, and, and I think that's, that's an inspiration uh, to, to a lot of people and how people should really take uh, like, like how, how people should think and how they should, they should make decisions. Yeah. I mean, you're <clears throat> right, man. The, you, those words spoke to me moment of truth because that's it, man. That was my moment of truth. It's my moment of truth on Monday when I decide to come in to, well, to my home office now <laughs> and, and pick up the phone and call people knowing I'm going to get rejection, knowing people don't want to buy my service or product, but I do it. I call those hundred numbers because I know that one or that two people are going to need my help. So it's your moment of truth every day to, to get out of your comfort zone and do what you don't want to do because I know that feeling it speaks to you. You know, there's something that you should be doing, Chad, yeah. you know, but you don't do it. You don't do it because you either you're afraid to do it or it's something, you know, same thing for me. There's things that I know I need to be doing and I don't want to do them. And so I distract myself with other shit, you know, to get, get my mind off of it. But when, when the moment of truth comes knocking at your door and it's do or die, you, you, you're going to either have to go on attack mode you're either going to have to say this shit will not stand and take your stand and get what you deserve, or you're going to back down and, and, and curl yourself in a ball. So I think that's, that's really the main thing. I can, I can give you all the advice in the world if you're mm. watching this and you're trying to get inspired, right? And you're picking up some golden nuggets and some ideas, but the moment of truth is going to come knocking at your door one of these days and you're either going to be ready for it and you're going to face it and you're going to break down that door and go out there and face what you need to face, or you're going to stay in and you're going to avoid it. So that's, that's what I would say is you need to make that decision for yourself. You need to figure out your why you need to figure out Let's why you're going to do yeah. this, you know, before you can figure out the what you got to figure out the why before sure. you can figure out the what. And for me, I had my why. I had my why on my moment of truth. Why am I going to go through this hell? It was very clear. It was you. clear because if I don't do it, if I don't do it, who the hell is going to protect my family? Who the hell is going to, sure. is going to take care of everybody? If it's not me, who is it? And I think Brian Tracy has a great, great saying. He says, uh, if it's up to be, if it is to be, it's up to me. And yes. so that's, <clears throat> that's totally right, man. Shout out to, uh, Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, you know, what a huge inspiration that guy is, you know. I agree. Um, you, sh you should get on, you know, and, and, and try and do a podcast with him. What an inspiration. It's going to happen um, in the future. Ryan Tracy, Zig Ziglar. Uh, man, there's so many great salespeople out there that you can, that you can follow. Um, you know, a lot of greats. Um, but I would just say aspire aspire to be something more than what you are now 
And if you, if life gives you a hint and life says, man, I either want to be a really great salesperson or if I want to be a great chef or if I want to be a great, yeah. you know, speaker, <clears throat> I think what you should do is you should look at the people who are already successful and study them. And I think that instead of watching right. TV, you know, sure. and sitting on your ass during the, uh, you know, this pandemic every day, I think you should be on YouTube listening, picking up information. I think you need to right. feed your mind. So make, figure out your why, feed your mind, feed your body, get some exercise and get out of your comfort zone and do what, do what you came here to do. Because the reality, man, at the end of the day, Chad, coronavirus, no coronavirus, we're all going to die. It's all going to be over. Mm. This is the realization of life. We know that no one makes it, you know? And so if you're going to die anyway, die with some damn pride you know, get your shit together, die on your own terms. And I think that's, that's kind of what made me what I am. I saw everybody as a young kid going through the same process, the same system. Mm. It scared the shit out of me. It looked like a production line. I said, I'm going to do things my own way. And I wasn't always right. I paid for it. I got my ass kicked. I should have done, I could have done things more perfectly, but the truth is don't wait for things to be perfect. Go in and do them anyway. It's better that you have imperfect action versus perfect inaction. You know I what I mean? I, I want to highlight something um, that you mentioned, and uh, so a lot of people might have missed that. You mentioned it looks like a production line, and to you that was scary, but to most people, they might not even notice that they're just part of the production part of the manufacturing process like part of the matrix man matrix, matrix like the system fucking it's zombie like it's rigged that, man right it's rigged it's a rigged system that's what robert kiyosaki talks <clears throat> about his here's another one you know shout out to robert kiyosaki because man you know he talks about this so well in his in his wealth quadrant you know yeah, yeah. he talks about you know, you're either an employee or a business owner or an investor or a small business, right? So, you know, it, it really is the system. That's what the schooling system was meant for, actually. The schooling system was implemented by these oligarchs to be able to train employees, you know, on a massive level. Sure. So they created the schooling system. How and do you get so, out of that? that antiquated and destructive system. and i'm not saying the schooling system is bad but that you know look at what it's turned into right no i but agree with you if, if if you're truly let's say for example if you want to be passionate uh you're passionate about being a doctor or a nurse and obviously i would like my doctor you know to have a a medical degree and not just someone who went to youtube right but i think what you're trying to point out here is it's you know there's so much more to 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 just really uh you know go into college i mean most people have this conventional understanding of what success is is go to college graduate get a job and then retire which is super linear yes. now if your s definition of success is outside of that paradigm outside of that box and which is really about creating something you know useful building something huge being part of something big you know, other than being, you know, an employee, then, then I guess that's what you're, you're talking about being the school system. Something that you mentioned, look, look how broken this thing is. Look how, look what they teach people to do. They say, okay, you're going to go to school. You're going to do 18 years of schooling. Okay. And then after that, you're going to go to college. And what they teach people in America is you're going to, you're going to on average 30, $40,000 of debt on average, you're talking mm. hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt in some cases. So right after school, you go into college, right? I'm not knocking college, you know. I'm not knocking it because there's very intelligent people. Bill Gates says people who have college degrees are far more likely to succeed and is, is right. Sure. Um, but college is a business at the end of the day. And then right. what? The whole promise is so that you can get out of there and go look for a great job. But now you're in debt. And now they say to you, buy a house. Okay, so now you've got college and now you've got a house payment. Oh, and by the way, go get a job and work that fucking job for the next 40 years. And when you're 65 years old 
and your dick don't work no more, you know, <laughs> and you and you, and you, and you've wasted your life, then we're gonna let you, you retire, okay? And I'm not knocking the social security system; it's amazing, only place in the world I think where they give you a solid pension when you're older, right? So it's a good deal. But 40 years, come on, man, 40 years. Can you imagine working for 40 years to retire? I don't wanna work 40 years. I wanna work four years, you know, and, and, and retire. So that's what I say, look at the system that we're in. Look at, look at what happened. And I, I'm probably the only guy, look, in high school, it, it, which is my frame of reference, we have what, 300 people who graduated? There's only mm -hmm. like two or three business owners, you know, and you know, the, not many of them are successful. So that's, that's the thing, it, it, it comes down to it. It's like, either you're gonna go and be a part of this production line and work for 40 years, 40 years a slave, and then you're gonna go when you're old and wasted and you know, retire and live your life. Why don't you just work now? Why don't you just go mentor for somebody? Why don't you just go learn what this person's doing to become successful? Work for them for free, you know, get offer your services, become a person of value and then start your own thing. And then, you know, and, and here's the thing, easier said than done. Sure. Easier said than done. Sure. Let's talk about this for a second. And and I know you've been trying to close off, but the thing is, I work oh, no, nights not and at we can all, keep dude. going. Dude, not but at all. <laughs> let's, here's let's here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, as far as um, this this whole thing, you should be looking for a mentor. And I and agree, a thousand percent. Th that's the main thing. It's 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 my college. Even though I didn't go, my college was learning a mentorship inside of a company and learning how to do all these things. You know, there's, um, there's a great watchmaker. I forgot the guy's name. He had a viral video, uh, the two hours early guy, I think is an Austrian or something, but, um, he talks about the same thing, you know, is he went into a business, he learned everything from the ground up and then you start your that way. So, mentorship in a way is more valuable than college it's a very valuable skill right. you know the stuff that i could that uh, that i've taught salespeople over the years that stuff has kept people alive you know i want to so. just kind of add to that and really carefully qualify the, the the concept and principle that you're you're trying to to share here i think the first step to do is to really do some deep introspect introspection and go through uh, and, and really be super self-aware and really know what, number one, what you hate doing, number two, what your skill sets are, you know, what you obsess about, what you're passionate about. And then once you got that really clear, then mm -hmm. determine what you want to pursue in life, what your life purpose is. Because again, it would be a different for a nurse, for Mother Teresa, for Pope Francis, for business owners like us. But once you're really clear at all of these things, then start. Then from there, derive your your flight plan, your next series of actions. And if it's really being a business owner, then I guess that's that's when you know you don't have to go to college and just look for a person you look up to. Like say for example, let's not go too far off. You if you want to start your own digital agency, then you want to you know, get Brian on a call and say, Hey, Brian, I really admire what you do. I want to be mentored yeah. by you and then stay with the company for the next five to 10 years. And, you know, that's the best way to get a PhD, not just in, in, in your career or business in, in life, I would think, as opposed to going, in life. To, yeah. right. Going to college and say, okay, let me dabble in, you know, business management and well, that's four years or probably five years. I didn't go to college myself. Like technically I'm just a high school graduate. And then after college, what do you do? What do you do? Look so, for a job, like, right? like what they, what everybody else did, you know? And then the, there was this notion, especially in, during our time when we were growing up, oh, you can't get a job. And especially during our parents' time, oh, you can't get a job if you don't have a college degree. Right. College degree is everything in life, right? Here, here's another guy that didn't have a college degree. Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs, baby. Yep. Steve Jobs. Yep. Steve Jobs said 
he said he talks about this in this famous speech that released just you know around his death. Uh, he said he said running a business is so damn difficult that you have to be absolutely you have to be obsessed with it. You have to be passionate about it. Yep. You have to really love it because what's going to get you through is not the money, you know, it's not the job. It's, it's, you really have to love it. There's so much that goes into it, you know? And what I was going to say is in all honesty, I'm just one part of the business. I'm just one part of the business. The biz dude, we have, we have, we have a CFO in charge of our finances who makes sure that all our people are getting paid and that we're staying afloat and making a profit. You know, I have my brother who's running all of our, production. I've got phenomenal uh, officers who are in charge of our development teams, our sales teams. It is teamwork. It's not one person who makes it successful. And I think very often you'll look at people like Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or mm -hmm. even Jeff Bezos mm -hmm. uh, or even, you know, just the guy that's a little bit more successful than you. You think mm -hmm. it's just him? It's not him. It's the ability to surround yourself with very valuable people. Sure. And like what Steve Jobs said, he said, when I hire people, I don't hire people that are dumber than me. I hire people that are smarter than me because or else why would I be hiring them? And That's I'm the fine. same thing. Yeah. I'm a, on this interview I did yesterday, I was a terrible interviewer, you know, cause I'm a salesman. I'm, I'm easy to sell to. Right. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And then my, <laughs> and then my, <laughs> my HR managers, she stopped me. She's like, Hey, hold, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You know, let's, let's do this the right way. So for me, you know, I'm unconventional. I'm not, you know, everything I, I learned, you can learn on the internet. But the thing about this is one thing that's really helped me is surrounding myself mm. with great individuals because that's what, that's what's kept this going. I could not do this by myself. I could not build the business by myself. And I think when people say, well, why don't you just start your own business? Hey man, it's more than that. It's not that yeah. easy. You have to, you have to look at yourself. Uh, like what Steve Jobs says, so I'm going to look at myself in the mirror every single day yeah. and ask myself, if this was my last day on earth, would I do what I'm about to do? And if the answer is no, then something's wrong. And I've had that right. feeling quite often in my life. And I still have that feeling, but I know that at the end of the day, uh, what makes me proud is, you know, you build a business, you can take care of your people. I'm taking care of of my mom, I'm taking care of my dad, I'm paying the mortgage, I'm taking care of all of our employees, taking good care of my family, mm. we have an income uh, coming in, and so I'm just blessed, you know, I don't need uh, Scrooge McDuck level money, <laughs> you know, to succeed, I don't need the Lambos, I just need my own pride, I need my own thing, my own little digital empire, right, right? so uh, the other thing is don't compare yourself to those people, just before you even start a business, figure out what the end goal is. Figure out the end in mind. First. Why is that important? It's important. Here's another book that talks about this. You ever read uh, Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Power? Power, yeah. He did a 50 cent ver version. The 50 uh -huh. cent version. I got the 50 cent version. So are we showing books too. now? Is that what we're doing? Because I'm not prepared. To, I'm throwing some <laughs> golden nuggets. I know you've got some good books. So. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, what the hell? I lost my train of thought. What were we talking? Sorry, oh yeah. yeah, figure figure out the end in mind, because if you figure out what victory looks like, if you start a business and you say, hey, you know, I'm gonna start uh, WealthX and we're gonna teach people all this, you gotta figure out what the vision is before you get there. You gotta figure out what what victory looks like, because you could be fighting for years and years and you don't even mm. know what the hell you're fighting for. It's like I, going to war without having an objective. I so, agree. Getting clear with the outcome would, I mean, that's pretty low loaded and we can, that subject alone is something that we can talk about for hours and hours, but I'm, I'm going to make it like succinct. Getting clear with the outcome. Why is that beneficial? It's well, number one, you mentioned something about, uh, which is truly, truly important about uh, bringing in the right people within your circle of influences. If you know a very clear outcome, you know, the vision is a lot easier to sell to these right people that you'll bring in who would buy into the vision. 
uh, and and then that what will happen is everybody will be animated with the same vision and inspired with the same vision and they know right. exactly where to go without you micromanaging and and and, and telling them every day that hey yes. this is what we want to do um another thing that you uh uh well i'll i'll stop at that because again this is this is about you this is your interview um, so so for hmm. so for for that uh vision that's that's my style of leadership some people have a very different style of leadership especially managers managers are very logistical but what you were just talking about that's what I do. I just give my managers the vision. I said, this is what it's going to look like. And I give it to them in a very vivid, detailed, colorful vision. Yeah. You know, we're going to have a big team and a beautiful office, and this is what it's going to look like. And we're going to have this many clients, you know, and all this stuff. And what I do is I let my managers <clears throat> figure out the logistics. That's how this works. There, so, there, there's a term for that. Uh, I just wanted to inject. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's it's the uh, it's called mid-level abstraction, and what that means is, it's not too vague. Like saying, okay, we're gonna be the best company. Like, what the fuck does best company exactly means? It's too vague and abstract, right? And yeah. then the antithesis of that, the opposite of that, is too like uh, detailed. Like, all right. What we're going to do is, you know, this hour we're going to do this. They want to do this. You do that. They're like micromanaging. But when it's a mid-level ex abstraction, it's like it's helping your people understand where exactly when about where you want to go. The mission objective is super clear. But at the same time, you don't need to micromanage these guys and tell them every fucking minute what, what they should be doing. Um, yeah. I, I just wanted to share that. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's the style of leadership, you know, um, everybody's style is different, but I just, it's like in the military, you know, if I'm, if I'm the general, I'm going to tell my people, hey, that's our objective. We're going to take this battlefield. Here's mm. how we're going to do it. But when you're in the battle, you're the captain, you're in charge of leading the forces. You're in charge of the minute by minute micro decisions that are going to win this war. So that would be like the analogy, you know, is, is, and this is how you should lead. You should give people, yeah. you should, you should give people your vision and you should let them do their job. Exactly. You shouldn't be on, you shouldn't be on top of the micromanaging them. Otherwise, you know? why'd you hire them? Why did you hire, why, why, what's the point of hiring these people? And that goes back, that closes, uh, that, well, not really closes, but that's to your point when you said, uh, you, you, you meant you share this thing about Steve Jobs saying that, okay, we want to hire people who are better than us, people who are A plus people. We don't want to bring people yes. who are that we can't lear learn from, which are B plus people, because then this B plus people will start hiring B people and B people will start hiring C plus people. And so it's going to be a yeah. downward spiral. Yeah. A players, A players like to work with other A players. That's very true. Exactly. Me, my man, uh, myself, my brother, my manager, we're like all high level you know, we're, it's like a basketball team, man. I don't know much about basketball, but, you know, you see these elite teams, you're all elite players. I want to work with other elite operators, you know, and those operators, they want to work with other elite people. But if the moment you bring somebody mediocre into your team, yeah, watch out, especially if you give them a position of power, because the mediocre person will bring in people even more mediocre into the chain. And so as a business owner, especially when you're building your teams, you've got to make sure that you are really comfortable and you can really level with your people. And, and you got to make sure they're A level, A players, because A players like to play with other A players. We don't like to tolerate, you know, other newbies. You know what I mean? It's like, kind of like a video game, you know, it's right. competitive, right? A players are competitive. So. And, and, uh, and, uh, but at the same time, I feel like there are newbies who have this, this, uh, who are great at what they do as well. I think that's what you're, you're saying. I, so, okay, let me just, let me say this. Um, I know exactly what you mean because I've been, I've worked in several different uh, industries and businesses and I know what it feels like working with uh, people who don't hold themselves at a very high standards. They lack energy. you feel awful just being around yeah. them there's this thing that you can yeah. put a finger on but you just feel 
awkward and awful being they around They drag that everybody down exactly. with their poisonous energy. Yeah, They're looking yeah. at the clock. Oh, it's seven right. o'clock. I'm out of here. You know, uh, they, they, you know, they, it's just it's a, right. Ne and, negative force, a negative force. Right. You got to watch out for that in your company, oh, you know, man. Is, is, absolutely. Because you could, you could hire the wrong person. And it's like the coronavirus, man. They spread the freaking disease around and they analogy, infect bro. other people. Yeah. You know, so, you know, don't hire the coronas, man. Stay away. <laughs> uh, so, so it's like it was what uh, a lot of people say, man, is, 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 is hire, uh, hire slowly and, and fire fast, you know, basically. You got to be about, careful about the people you put on. More about hiring. Uh, and this is something I, I've learned from Jay Abraham. Jay Abraham, if you don't know him, go do research yeah. about him. But what, basically, the $9 billion man or something? I, I think it's 12 or $20 billion guy now. Yeah. Like the best mentor when it comes to you know, marketing and finding undervalued and untapped opportunities in a given business. Just do a research on. So what he said about hiring is that uh, cry once, um, and hire the best or hire, hire, you know, best potential. What that means is, you know, when, 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 when you hire people, most likely the ones who are really great, uh, people know their value and they're, they're probably going to be, you know, they're going to cost you because you're paying for oh, the value that they can yeah. bring. Now, <laughs> they're not cheap. Yeah. They're not cheap. But then the question is, okay, well, what if you're starting? Then that's when you hire the, the you know, the, someone potential. who has potential and train them. Going back to what you said, look at their attitude, attitude how they behave, their energy, if they yes. bring fresh energy exactly. to the team. And that, because cause it's easy to try and train skill, but, you know, you could have the best skillful person you know, for the job, but then they don't work well with, with the group and he, he or she just drags the team down. And that's like, that's the Corona employee that we're talking about. That's true, man. That's true. I mean, there, there, there's, there's an asshole rule is you don't want to have a person, even if they're, even if they're very good at their job, hmm. you know, if they're, you know, 10, 20% asshole, you probably don't want this person on the team, <laughs> you know? So it, it's, all, it's also about keeping good vibes and good yeah, yeah. team dynamic. Now that's yep. changed a little bit now that everybody's working from home. I'm still figuring out how I'm going to um, adjust and adapt to that. We've been using Zoom meetings and stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's very true, dude. We, we have covered so many, so many golden nuggets in this talk that I think if you put this out there and the right person listens to it, man, they, they'll listen to this. They'll make a fortune. I, you know. I really, I mean, that's the clear objective, right? One, one of the really important objectives of this. Um, and I, I truly hope that when we publish this and put it out there, people see, see the, the content of this initiative the way we, we see it. Uh, and hopefully when they watch it, they, they learn from it and implement, you know, the things that they learned over the course of this video podcast. So... Dude, I yeah. think we we probably beat you know Joe Rogan in terms of yeah I was I was going for how long have we been on this three or four hours I don't Something know like dude it was like I was in the zone we were in yeah. the zone man it was it was amazing but uh, it's one forty five in the morning right now oh wow uh, we're you know it's okay because we work nights I don't know what I'm gonna do you know probably jog around the neighborhood or something. <laughs> I want to leave but, some uh, for Patrick because he might like, dude, you and Brian just talked about everything. Now what are we going to talk about? So don't even, don't even show him. Don't even show him the video. Just have your own thing with him. Cause I'm he's not totally different than me. You know, I, I, uh, that's exactly why it's a two part dude. series. That's exactly yeah. why it's a two part series. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to get the other, the other side of the brain basically, you know, <laughs> when you talk to Pat. So yeah, dude, yeah. Chad, man, what, what, what an honor, man. What an honor to, uh, to be with you, to share this, and uh, this is getting published. So, I mean, that's going to be amazing. And I hope that the next time we do talk or, you know, maybe you invite me back onto your podcast or maybe I'll have you on mine. Sure. Um, man, I think we will, I'm looking forward to seeing you grow. I'm looking forward to Thank you. taking the, you know, and, and keeping this friendship with you for many years. Who knows, man, since this is recorded, we might be able to look back 20 years from now and say, oh shit, 
we we were newbies back then <laughs> yeah yeah so. dude the pleasure is all mine it's such a great pleasure to have you as the premiere uh thank you for sharing all of your insights uh allowing us and all the viewers to learn from you know the mistakes and the challenges that you've gone through thank you for sharing your successes you're such an inspiration and i really say that uh you know genuinely um thank you man it's 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 been awesome like i said we've been on the zone and i look forward to hopefully somewhere down the road like an in person episode where we like we it's going to be an office setting and you have your uh, you know a cuban cigar and your your brand of whiskey let's get some whiskey oh yeah it's yeah, going to be dude. great yeah. yeah we'll do it all, all right, right. Well, thanks Sign again. And yeah, you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks again, Brian.